Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video game review. And for this review, I'm going to be taking a look at Shin Megami Tensei 5 for the Nintendo Switch, though. Plus, I want to give my thoughts on Amazon Prime's new show, The Legend of Voice Vox Machia, if I'm saying the name correctly, though. Um, and if you're interested in any gameplay of Shin Megami Tensei 5, I'll have a link down in the description down below, or you could click on the card that will appear up on this video. And for parents out there, um, it's worth pointing out Shin Megami Tensei 5 is rated M for mature audiences only, it means ages 17 and up by the ESRP, while The Legend of Vox Machia is rated TV um, MA, though. Um, one of the games that was announced when the Nintendo Switch um, was was basically talked about in January 2017 was the game that was in development was the Shin Megami Tensei 5 though. Now Shin Megami Tensei the series has appeared on different systems from the PlayStation and has also made an appearance on the Nintendo DS particularly the Nintendo 3DS. So to hear that this game was going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch was certainly interesting indeed but it also, over the years, there was some silence and people were wondering what happened to that game. Some thought that it would suffer the same fate as Ubisoft's Steep, which was announced for the Nintendo Switch but got cancelled, though, and many are wondering if that was, if that was going to happen to Shin Megami Tensei V. Now, Atlas had made claims that the game was still in development, still in development, and then we finally got a chance to see some actual gameplay, though, and it definitely showed um, that the game wasn't dead as many people thought it would be. So when the game finally came out, I believe it was in December though, I got a chance to play the game myself though, and after spending about maybe 12 hours um, with the game, I honestly have to say that I definitely um, enjoyed uh, my time with Shin Megami Tensei 5 um, so far though. So why don't we get started with the pros and the cons, and there are really, um, there are really um, three pros and two cons to be exact. Uh, the first one has to do with the visuals of the game. And while Shin Megami Tensei's 5's visuals isn't really going to knock every knock everyone out of the ballpark, though, I will say um, the game looks definitely nice, though. The world of a post-apocalyptic Tokyo looks really neat, to be exact, though. Um, and some of the designs of the demons look really um, impressive, especially based off of different, like, you know, different cultures and what gods or demons um, look like, though. So it's still, the game definitely looks nice um, visually, though, even for something on the Nintendo Switch, though. And the next thing I do want to talk about is the combat. And as far as combat go, it is definitely um, enjoyable, though. It's part RPG and in some ways kind of a little bit like Pokemon in a way where you do want to try to bring some of the demons on your side, to be exact. Now, you can do that by talking to them. Sometimes you may be able to convince them to join you. Other times it may require you to hand over a Machia, which is the in-game currency, or some of your health or items to be exact for them to join you. Other times they may simply may not, so, other times when you talk to them, they may choose to leave the battle and not confront you at, at all though. But there are times when you will need some of those demons on your side to battle um, other enemies though. And sometimes they have abilities that you don't have though, although there are times, although there are are times when you can upgrade your main character to carry some of the demon's um, ability though. Um, the RPG mechanics are kind of similar to um, if for those who've played games like the Tokyo Mirage session though. Now I'm not familiar with all of Atlas's RPGs, but those who've played Tokyo Mirage Session um, will be sort of will see some similarities um, in a way, though. Um, basically, when you attack an enemy with a spell or not, you'll learn ex exactly whether they are um, weak against it or not. So it sort of so once you do that, it sort of gives you an idea every time you run into that enemy to figure out which spell to use best against that against that enemy to be exact though. Other times in the game you will have the ability to basically fuse certain demons together to make even more powerful demons to use as your allies though. So as you level up you'll be able to make more um, powerful demons and all though. So in terms of the combat though um, it is enjoyable though um, and it certainly is fun especially with a little bit of, even if it's a little, has a little bit of a Pokemon to it to a certain um, degree, though.
And last but not least, it's a story. And I will say the story is uh, very interesting, though. I like the whole post-apocalyptic um, setting that they had for half of the game in terms of basically the world being now overrun by demons and angels um, in a way. It's a really interesting and very neat setting that they have for the game though and the character is also very interesting to be exact though. So from a story standpoint um, the game definitely is um, very interesting and good in, in my book though. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two, which is the cons, plus my thoughts on the legend of Vox Machia, if I'm saying the name correctly. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my video review of Shimagani Tensei 5 for the Nintendo Switch. So now that I gave you the pros, why don't we get started with the cons? And there are really only two cons I could think of based on my time with Shimagami Tensei 5. Uh, the first one I want to talk about how is the grind in the game. Um, now, I mean, grinding in RPGs are not exactly uncommon though i've seen them in several different rpgs to be exact though and some of them can be okay some of them are not though um and shimigami tensei 5 is no exception though the game can be a little bit um grindy at time especially when you're trying to level up you know certain demons or trying to get certain spells from certain demons so you can add them to your character and all though does it make the game unplayable or anything like that no it doesn't really make it unplayable or any or anything at all like that to be exact but i don't deny the fact that the game can be grindy um here and there at times though and the biggest complaint I will say about the game is the frame rate, though. And while the game does run at a 30 frames per second, though, there are times when you do see the frame rate sort of take sort of a dip, whether it's in the cutscenes or whether it's in, or <coughs> excuse me, or when it's in during the gameplay part. And that could be um, a bit annoying for some folks, though. If there is a silver lining, however, on this is that this is basically since Shimigami Tensei is, is a turn-based RPG. RPG, it doesn't have really a, at least in my view, a huge impact because it's not a action-based or fast-paced game like, say, something like, say, like a warrior-style type of a game. That might be a completely different story, though, but for something like a turn-based um, RPG, it isn't really as bothersome, and to me, it didn't really have any major impact in the game though it's the same view i had when fairy tale came to the nintendo switch or xcom 2 um came to the nintendo switch that said though i will say it is noticeable and it can get a bit annoying um now and then and i do hope that atlas does take the time to basically maybe put out a patch and sort of iron certain things out though so yes the frame rate does tend to dip though it is annoying though but Again, based on my time with the game and from my perspective though, it didn't ruin the experience or the fun of Shin Megami Tensei 5, especially considering this is a turn-based RPG, not like a fast-paced action title or anything like that. Overall though, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is an enjoyable Atlas JRPG for the Nintendo Switch and one that I would definitely recommend those consider taking a look at it, especially if you like Tokyo Mirage Session and all. At its best though, the visuals of the game look nice to it. The combat is enjoyable in a way though, especially for those who were fans of the Tokyo Mirage Session combat though. And the story is interesting to be exact, the whole post-apocalyptic and the battle between angels and demons and all. So it's a very interesting story though. At its worst, sometimes um, it can be grindy at times. That might be an issue for some. Others may not consider that a big deal. The frame rate, though, is probably the game's biggest con or the biggest weak point, though. Um, it, it It is certainly noticeable. However, like I said, based on my time with it, I didn't find it that it ruined the experience, mostly because this is a turn-based RPG, not an action pack you know action game or anything like that though but it might be but for some that might be a bit of a turnoff though 
Putting those aside though, I did enjoy Shin Megami Tensei 5 though. I'm glad it was well worth the wait for it to come to the Nintendo Switch though. Um, we do know the game is going to be coming to the PC, so you have to weigh in which is important to you. Do you want to get the PC, which is obviously probably be the best looking version, or do you want to get it from the Nintendo Switch with the whole portability aspect to it to be exact though. And honestly, I'm fine with it on the Nintendo Switch though. Some might rather wait for the PC and that's fine. If you prefer to get it on PC when it comes out th there, that's that's your call. But for me, as a long time Nintendo fan and as a console gamer though, I am happy with the version that is available on the Nintendo Switch though. Um, hopefully this opens the door for a Shin Megami Tensei 6 if that ever happens though. And I do hope this also opens the door for um, Atlas and Sega to bring more of their RPGs, maybe another, maybe a Persona entry to be exact, to even maybe some of the games from Vanillaware. We know 13 Sentinels coming to the Switch, but I would like to see Miramasa Demon Blade, Odin Sphere, Dragon Crown make their way over to the Nintendo Switch and other Atlas games to be exact. And I hope that with the game selling uh, last time we, we've heard, and it was basically over 800,000 copies worldwide, that this opens the door for more Atlas games coming to the um, Nintendo Switch, though. <clears throat> All right, uh, before I end this video, I want to give my thoughts on Amazon Prime's newest show, The Legend of Vox Machia, if I'm saying the name correctly, though. Now, I just somehow stumbled upon this, though, when I was watching, you know, videos on YouTube and they were advertising Amazon Prime's newest show, Vox Moxia, though. And supposedly it's based off of the, based off during, in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. And while I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons, I never played it though. So when they were heard that it was coming on Amazon Prime, I decided to take a look and watch some, watch at least two of the episodes though, um, since I have a, so I have a Prime membership though. And honestly, I would say it's definitely enjoyable and very interesting to be exact though. Um, animation wise, it looks like something you would see from, you know, Avatar, The Last An Airbender, or The Legend of Korra in a way though, to the cast, which almost gives off a little bit of a, somewhat of a Guardians of a Galaxy vibe to it to a certain degree. One character almost feels like I'm watching Drax the Destroyer in a way though. Um, but the show itself is very, somewhat, raunchy and risque in a certain degree but in a very funny and humorous way though the first two episodes involves the, the cast f fighting a evil dragon that has pretty much terrorized the land though and some of the and some of it is just the story itself is just very interesting and the whole world of it looks um really interesting to be exact though um it's very much a it's also has some funny moments but also um, some very funny jokes to be exact though. So it's definitely a very interesting show and one I would, um, one I'm definitely gonna keep an eye out to see how future episodes um, play out. So for me, I thought Legend of Vox Machia is an enjoyable show to be exact, even though I'm not a big Dungeons and Dragons fan or anything like that, but it is worth taking a look at, especially if you have um, Amazon Prime or you have are part of Amazon Prime video service though. So. It's worth taking a look at though and see how it is. Currently right now, I think as of recording this video, they put out, I, I believe three episodes though. So I'll have to take a look and see episode three and hopefully we'll see how future episodes are. And if the show does really well, it'll be interesting to see if they announce um, a season two to be exact. So my my take on The Legend of Vox Moxia is that it's funny and it's also interesting at the same time, even though I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons fan or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes my video review of Shin Megami Tensei 5 and my thoughts on Amazon Prime's The Legend of Vox Machia, though. Um, and again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Shin Megami Tensei 5? Have you tried the game out yet, though? Have you picked it up for the Nintendo Switch? Are you waiting for when the game comes to the PC, though? Um, do you think the gameplay is enjoyable in any way? Um, do you think that this opens the door for a Shin Megami Tensei 6 or the possibility of Atlas bringing up their other games over to the Nintendo Switch? And what are your thoughts about The Legend of Vox Machia, though? Is it a show that interests you in any way, though? Are you okay with it being a little um, raunchy and risque to a certain um, degree? 
Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you'd like. You do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye.